This video is the last episode of my three-part series on photographic composition. The links to the first and second video, as well as the list of techniques discussed, are in the description below. You can view the videos in any order because I cover different topics in each. Often the reason one returns again and again to certain photographers' work is because they are employing a visual language that resonates with your mind system of making sense of the world. A composition created by a photographer who spent many years developing their approach is often multi-layered and instantly recognizable. Their ability to create form out of elements within the frame has been integrated with who they are in the world and also their overall photographic approach or style. The photographic process can be compared with other creative mediums like writing or the composition of music. Shakespeare and Mozart were able to produce outwardly simple works that have not become outmoded. This is due to their complexity and multifaceted construction. A layered photographic composition can incorporate many or just a few of the compositional techniques that I've discussed. But the images that hold our attention for the longest are those that both hook us into the subject matter as well as engage us on an emotional or mythological level. I'll continue to use photographic examples to discuss compositional techniques in this video. The idea of shape is really broad. I'm going to look now at four minor white photographs. In this case, he's repeated the circle three times to accentuate the shape. And the lighting is really important here in the way he's pulled out the detail. In this case, the ship's propeller is a wonderfully organic shape, which has been placed upon the fairly straight lines that the wood has produced. He's also allowed for a diagonal line which adds a bit of tension to the image. This is more simple and has probably been done many times since Minor White took this photograph. But what we see is a beautiful shape together with strong line elements. The black lines are radiating out from a central column which produces fantastic repetition. And when you start looking closer, you can see the repetition of this pattern on the micro level. This is a really simple image of an adobe type structure. And the handmade walls provide a very organic finish. He's allowed the clouds to be dark and dramatic in the background. And in this way, he avoids producing an image that is purely graphic. This image has multiple levels that the eye can focus on repetitions of lines going down, repeated in the background as the light shines through them, got a repetition here in the reflection, and crossing lines here, everything is slightly on a diagonal. This is seemingly a really simple study of a fork leaning on a plate, but when you start to look at it, it's all about shape and light. He's managed to produce a repetition of the circle, obviously a repetition of the fork. What breaks up the simple pattern is the repetition of the fork tines. He's also allowed some shadow detail along the top, and one can see the worn tabletop which grounds the photograph in reality. All of these recent images have a very minimalistic quality. And this allows the photographer to really line up the elements within a very graphic form. The next few photographs utilize windows within the frame. In this photograph by Cortez, it's a very beautifully simplified shape in which he's broken the frame up into quadrants. Winogrand here has used a window of the garage, basically the garage door. In this case, the photographer is looking through the legs of one elephant, which has provided a rectangular window or frame within the frame. This is a more obvious example of windows within the wider frame. 
Paul Strand using a doorway as a window to look out onto a snowy landscape. Lee Freelander had a fascination with the reflections within rear view mirrors and side mirrors of his car. There's also a repetition of shape, a repetition of the stop signs, and then this bizarre dinosaur structure in the background. In this photograph of three women walking down the Hollywood Walk of Fame, Gary Winogrand has incorporated a strong triangular structure. This acts as a funnel shape which provides direction for the three women in the center of the frame to walk towards the photographer. The shape also draws the viewer's eye towards the woman. This photograph has a complex construction. Not only is the triangular shape repeated multiple times, but he's also used the law of odds effectively by having three clear groupings. This photograph by Cortez concentrates on the triangular structure and is possibly a little more subtle. There's an obvious triangle here, but if you extend the lines, you repeat the pattern. Movement is a complex aspect of composition. In this photograph and the next, Imogen Cunningham has placed her movement within the frame in order to accentuate the particular direction in which the movement's going. In this case, the woman seemed to be floating in this direction, and she's left this empty or negative space on the right-hand side for us to imagine that the women have moved from the right to the left of the frame. In this case, Cunningham has used the same technique to make us think that there's movement in this direction, but it's more complicated because we've also got the hands going in this direction and a diagonal line here. So there's quite a few diagonals competing. This provides a vibrancy and adds to the movement within the image. This is a photograph by Robert Kappa and the assault on Omaha Beach during the D-Day landings. In this case, the whole image is filled with action, whereas in the previous image, there were isolated pockets of action within the frame. What we've been looking at so far with the images in this section is the variations in levels of movement, which can be compared with the fluctuations of tempo or beat within music. This photograph and the next by Michael Ackerman possibly don't have movement, but there's a blurring in the photograph which provides an unnerving feel. So the intent of the photographer is really different. He's creating atmosphere by bringing in a sense of movement or blur. In his case, there's often a sense of decadence coupled with danger. In the case of Alexei Titarenko, he was using these isolated areas of movement in order to accentuate a feeling. The idea behind his City of Shadows work, which he produced during the time in which the Soviet Union was collapsing in the early 1990s, was to visually mirror how the communist system removed individuality in the pursuit of the collective. In both of these images, the blurred movement provides almost a stream of nausea that is really disturbing. Howard Edgerton produced this photograph of a milk drop in 1957. It was during a time when photographers were experimenting with high shutter speeds. In this case, he's completely frozen the moment and the shape that's produced is what is really interesting. He's balanced it with a slight highlight here. The deep red color is what changes this photograph from a science experiment into something that is visually powerful. There are certain photographers that have used color to really balance photographs. If you have a look at this Stephen Shaw photograph, you've got the same olive green here, here, this section, and also at the bottom. 
which provides a real sort of grounding to the photograph and then you've got reds yeah yeah and yeah and another one up there they are on the door behind the color has therefore produced a complex symmetry which holds the photograph in balance here's another photograph by Stephen Shaw and he's used a different technique of using color to control a composition. In this case, he's almost filled the whole frame with a red surface and then flashed a red milk container on top of it. So this photograph is really about red with a little bit of white and yellow showing through. William Eggleston used color in a similar way. In this case, there's a green background and then green running vertically down here. This is a photograph about the color green. And even though one can look at it as a portrait of a woman, it's really about using the color green to create composition. Another example by William Eggleston, he's using red to balance the composition. If you take out the red from this photograph, there isn't much left that is going to excite one. But as soon as you put the color back, you're enticed again to explore the photograph. So it's important to be aware of color as one of the strong elements within the construction of one's composition. I hope this video provided some useful information. If you missed the previous two episodes, please click on either of these boxes above. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Is it over yet? Yes, it is good. It really is. What are they? Well. And find out what the future holds in store. Is it over yet?